So I'm still in my jam jams. I just had my coffee, my mushroom coffee in my Christmas mug in the month of July. Um, I wanted to share this insight. It's that I have now recognized all of the narcissistic partners I had in my life, all the, the husbands and the long-term um, last bad daddy. I call him bad daddy for a reason. I had to stop looking for some guy to be a father to me or take care of me. Yeah, women who have had relationship issues have daddy issues, but they're not the narcissists. They're the vulnerable ones. So that's what you do after you've had these failed relationships is you don't feel sorry for yourself. You go, wow, uh, those were my teachers. I learned so much from these narcissists. And I, I have to say kindly, the second uh, husband gave me the greatest amount of insight. He really did. And I'm so grateful for that. What kind of insights? Well, one of them is really kind of funny. And it's a tell because uh, a narcissistic personality type or an immature child will reason that if they have a feeling, then it's a fact. So if they feel like you're making fun of them, they will be like, you're making fun of me. And if the person truly isn't, then that person I'm not going to tell you how to handle situations like that. I'm talking about what's going on in somebody's head, all right? A child's not saying that. But in the relationships that I had with the successful learning of the narcissistic um, personality type and what I needed to become resilient to, and the, and the reasoning that they have is so unreasonable. If you come across this reasoning in legal situations, or in business, it's the same as when you're dealing with your own family. And it's um, that somebody will act like you meant something you didn't mean. And because they have that feeling, it's a fact. So a sister might say, Kat, you're making a dig. You're, you're making a dig at me by saying that. So in other words, it's about her and her mind. That's narcissistic. She's the golden child. She's not a bad person to me, but she doesn't see that her subjectiveness is not objectivity. The objective fact <clears throat> is if I state something that's a fact for me, it is not a dig to her, right? So feelings are not facts. I learned that. And, and then back to the second husband who I actually enjoyed a lot um, in so many ways because of his mental dexterity uh, and his ability to make jokes over nothing. It was, he goes, oh, you hurt my feeling. And this is when the kids were little because he helped raise my kids. And he was an excellent influence over my son uh, um, my daughter, I'm not so sure, I guess so, but um, that's a complicated issue, how my daughter treats me and how he used to treat me in front of her, which was shut up. I want to hear the, what the kids have to say as opposed to let's all have a discussion. Let's all learn to have positive communication together. He was the narcissist, so he, re he um, ran the pace of the conversation and he was the CEO of the conversation. So he always ran the meetings, which were the dinners. And my mother was the same way. They always dominate the conversation and then insult you for actually participating as if you're an imposer. And it's not like you're trying to dominate or butt heads. It's more like you're not allowed to say anything unless given permission. They have to ask you specifically. 
and then you have to be sure what they're asking you is not a setup. It's just crazy. So it's the same deal in business as it is in families as it is in marriages that are uh, horrific when you're married to one of these bulldogs, these king of the hill types. They're not team players. They look at you, doesn't matter who you are as an adversary, as an opponent. So you have that too. So I learned these things. They're not team players. They're always in it for themselves because they think you're trying to screw them. <laughs> it's like, relax, relax. What's our focus here? Focus on the goal. <laughs> How you feel about something does not make it true. But yeah, it was so funny. He used to say, you hurt my feeling. And that's when I realized he didn't have any other feelings other than that one feeling. I mean, he was rather monotonous. Same jokes. And I never criticized him once, but towards the end of our relationship, on my way to work on a Saturday after he had gotten up early and done his thing because he was in Pepperidge Farm delivery. You know, goldfish, Pepperidge Farm, Milano cookies, biscotti. I didn't eat it because it had hydro not hydrogenated fat in it. But when I was a kid, I had goldfish. You betcha. <laughs> That's the color of my hair, goldfish. It's henna. Yeah, I just went down memory lane there. Yeah, he used to call me a lush towards the end. His mother died and then he projected all of his unresolved issues onto me. I had to make him feel better by acting a certain way. I had to be a certain way so he felt better, other than allowing me to be who I was. I suddenly had to change who I was. I had to stop drinking completely. I had to stop talking to him about my family. He'd already heard it before. There was no need to talk about it already. I had a fucked up family. Ugh. But we could talk about his. We could discuss his. Only I couldn't have an opinion. I had to listen to him tell me what he thought. That's narcissistic abuse. To always be in a situation in which you're dictated to about what you when, when you can communicate and what you can say, what you can't say. And then when you do say something, you're degraded for it. So that was my childhood all over again. But when I wasn't being degraded, I was amused. <laughs> and my, my mother has, has uh, likable aspects to her too. That's why this whole situation is such, such mind effery to us, children of narcissists. But we, we learn these things. It's like, sister, Recognize, I'm not making you feel anything. You feel your feelings. I work. I am a single woman. Let's point out the facts. I tell her I work. She must be working out because she spent an entire day not addressing something that she was an instigator and part of. Stop telling mom to call the police. Let her know. The facts, our father is in protective care and guardianship of his eldest, his son, and his son is taking very good care of him and stop stirring the pot. Be truthful. Tell our mother the truth. Dad is with Ken because of protective order, meaning keeping things in order. <laughs> and him alive and not beaten to death at the age of almost 94 in August. Tell that woman she doesn't remember that she is turned into Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. 
Mr. Hyde did not know who Miss Dr. Jekyll was any more than Dr. Jekyll knew who Mr. Hyde was. They think black or white, and they're really good fabricators of stories. And they make really good stories up where they're not the victim at all. No. Meaning they are acting like they are. Every narcissist has a backstory about why they are the way they are. And the difference between a child of a, a, an adult child of a narcissist, me, is we became adults. And you wanna know what the de definition of an adult is? An adult takes responsibility for where they were born, into what state of being financially, color, race, creed, nationality, origin. And they, they take accountability for themselves. And they also learn about what the benefits were. You don't become a victim. Your struggles become a springboard by which you jump to reach who you are. But it is also through the descent of somebody else's clouds in the sky. My mother's uh, entire fabricated reality in the death zone, which I call my Mount Everest. It's like, now I'm going down to where I need to connect to the Sherpas, to my own inner Sherpa, to my respect for my life, for why that did I p pick these parents? But what have I learned that's a benefit? And how now then can I be all I can be, meaning me? Be the best I can be and love my life because it is a gift. And being present with somebody, being present when you're with them, that's the biggest gift you can give to another human. Narcissists don't do that. They're always shifting. They're always on their phone. They're always looking at this to the side. They're always wondering what to do next. They shuffle. They can't lay. They can't sit still. They can lay still when they pass out, but they cannot connect to you. They are not emotionally available and intimacy scares the bejesus out of them and they run for the hills. It's amazing what I've learned. And you know, one of the things that uh, I recognize is that, um, you know, symbolically there are deaths up there on, in, in, in that place my inner Mount Everest, that mountain I climbed. And I am marked forever. I am marked forever for being the adult child of a narcissist. I'm marked forever for every single one of my relationships, but it doesn't take away from my joy of life or my potential to be a good partner because of my kindness and, and the truth of my being. But right now is not the time to I'm taking sanctuary within myself, within my Sherpa village, because I got to my base camp and now I know who I am. And I love who I am. And that's why I can speak with such brutal honesty, if necessary, but not to always speak with honesty because it is not always the best policy. Sometimes it's best to just be quiet. So I am as the child of, an, uh, of uh, two sets of parents who are still alive and now struggling with an aging narcissist who's Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, my mother, and with my siblings. All of us dealing with what has occurred in our entire life. And yet, Rather than being an adversarial situation, it is the wonderful opportunity to heal. And I speak the truth. My name, Kathleen, means pure. Kenneth is the visionary leader. He's the leader in business. And I'm the spiritual guide. And it's about time you and Janine, which is God's gift, God's grace, and Jane is God's gift, 
and Corrine, you know what your name means? You are a maiden and you're a strong girl, okay? I look at you as a girl and I love you. You have to own up to where you are in the station of our family and you have to take that position seriously and use that gold to help heal. But just like in spiritual kutsungi, I talk about gold, the truth, the truth, my sister. And the truth is not what you feel it is. The truth is we have a situation that's a difficult one. But do not act as if everybody's acting against you by the fact you are the golden child. Just recognize that you have it hard too in a different way. And one of them, the number one way, is you're still appeasing to the narcissist. Stop playing lap dog. Stop do trying to be nice. Stop answering the phone all the time. And if you want to do all of that, then at least tell her truths, such as you don't remember, but it happened. They have film video. Dad does not want to come back. Everyone advises. You can even say, CAC says the same thing. And you yourself, golden child, know it. And you, for you to actually say it, for you to actually tell her would be the most beautiful golden truth in the world. To finally say something to her without the fear of losing your position because there is no position to lose. We're all positionless. We're in the reality of our parents dying and the slow agonizing demise of an aging narcissist has got to be the gnarliest thing anyone could ever experience. But put some humanity into it. That's all. A little love, peace, and understanding. So yes, I learn a lot in my marriages and exposures to these narcissistic men who aren't always terrible. And that's the thing about narcissists. That's why it's so confusing in the head. That's why it does a number on you. And I learned that too. But that's what uh, hypothermia does up there in Mount Everest. You know, Lincoln Hall, now deceased, uh, his first uh, summit on the way down, he kept trying to go back up. He wrote a whole book on it because he was left for dead and he came back from the dead. So well, the second time he died, he was age 56 and he died for final that time. <laughs> we'll talk about that in the symbology later. I'm just, I'm loving the whole like Mount Everest base camp thing, you know, so follow along, subscribe and like, uh, and I also come currently as kind of narrating the story of my family. And I hope you all listen family and you just realize we're just in this separately. But it can be together, but can it be in a way that's no longer begrudging or angry? Now, granted, Ken has a lot of anger that he's processing, and rightfully so. He's been um, mistreated and thought of incorrectly. And that has not been a kind thing to do to such a noble soul. So get off your own... Um, platform as my two sisters of what you think and perceive as real and just really take a step back okay so everybody any single time you think you know uh, something step back and there is that expression you can't judge a man until you've walked a mile in his moccasins or 10 miles or whatever um, perception percept uh, perceptives objectivity subjectivity those are all the things that, that we have to consider here. Perception, what you're, willing, what you're able to see, 
what you're and what you're willing to see are two different things. All for now. Oops.